I do know what I even more hated about this bloody thing. The controllers. You can't get them in. You can't get them out. You know, it's almost like your birthday with a package from China. So let's go. So when you're looking at some of these devices, and I mean like the one from AliExpress, they are like having a really cheap ass box. But this one, it got some very good, nice presentation to it. Over here, we're going to get the zipper. It doesn't look like the original one. It does, does have the color scheme like the or orange with the gray. I can say like this thing weighs almost nothing. Oh boy. Look at this button. And <laughs> it is really flimsy. Comes with a very long cable. So we're going to try it out. Because I'm really curious if the thing even works. Okay, so here we're going to get the system itself. Two controllers. Kind of weird form factor. They look slightly com more comfortable than the original one. And this one also comes with the Retroid adapter. And the Super Games 360 and 1. Power supply and we're having the EV out cable. So I'm curious what kind of voltage this device is going to need. Uh, let's see, it has... Who, uh, doesn't make any sense to me. Like it isn't all in Russia or something like that. What the hell? 7.5 volts? What? Ugh, doesn't make any sense. And of course we're going to get the warranty card that needs to be also... There's no toilet paper metal today. Oh boy, what a bummer. Ugh. Okay, so let's unbox one single controller. I'm really curious how good or how bad these things are. Oh, plastic. I hate the freaking plastic. Oh man, this feels really flimsy. But when you're looking at the form factor, it's quite interesting. So like with the original version I grew up with, late, like they were slightly bigger and they felt more clunky. And this, to have the floating D-pad, I personally really like it. It looks very comfortable. AB, of course, turbo, slow motion, that's slow, you know, like it's going to get ape shit with a star button. Interesting. I wish it was a little bit bigger, but overall, it's not bad at all. And not to forget, the smell test. Hmm, doesn't smell chemical at all. All right, so let's take a close look at the system itself. So the system itself, it's something I have seen before, like there are some different companies made this. Oh, I was exactly right, like 7.5 volts, that's a quite a weird voltage. At the back we're going to get the input for the adapter, then we're going to get AV out. At the front we're going to get two original ports, so I'm guessing I also can use the original controllers. The slot itself. <laughs> and then we're going to get the power and the reset. And this is going to be the LED for indication if it's going to get some juice. Okay, so let's take a close look at the games. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the adapter, of course. I'm going to do it like that. Oh yeah, because that's the way we like it. And we're also going to track out this Retroid card that came with it. Do I have a brain for it or what? Ah, Alright, and also what I'm going to do... I wanted to test out. I'm going to test out an EverDrive version and we're going to test out a different region game just to see if this thing can handle it all. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to do is try this other game card from Mario Bros. 3. I did clean it up and it seems to be getting the freaking error. So that is a little bit of a bummer. But the weird thing, the same also is for the other card which I'm laying around. So there is no support or they're not like doing anything in combination with the system. So another thing I noticed is that with this device, or I messed something up, that is of course possible, but when you try to look it up like this, I'm still getting the same stuff going on. So but after cleaning it for a couple of times, and it was a brand new card, I finally got it to work. Oh boy. So the final thing I wanted to test out is of course the NES N8 cartridge, just to see if this thing works. And it seems to be boiling up. So it depends what kind of cartridge you're having. Let's get this bloody thing back in. Let's see if it still works. Oh, finally. So let's try some of the games. 
okay especially for the people who really hate the white screen let's put it on 4x3 especially for you guys so people can stop complaining about it so let's try some games oh crap oh crap oh crap oh crap i pressed the slow button okay one thing is like the sound is really slow and i'm guessing that this device only being compatible with pearl games or something kind of weird I do see like lines in the screen itself and this has nothing to do with a monitor or the cable that is attached with this device. I also hear like a lot of interference when it comes to the signal output. Quite annoying in my opinion. So the guy from Avenger Island looks like he has an instant sunburn or something like that. You cannot tell me that is normal. Oh crap. The controls itself are playing quite nice. I love the D-pad. Ooh. Ooh. Alright. I'm Robocop and I actually just punch everybody on the street. Oh yeah. Do the Robocop dance. In this game you can just hear the inference go nuts. It's like horrible. The D-pad is very responsive. That's the reason I love to play this game. If it's a nice, good, responsive D-pad, this game works like a charm. Ooh. I will punch you in the balls and we'll drop in the water. Mm. Mm. Ha! Okay, so the next part, let's try the light gun. A lot of people requested it in my previous videos. Finally, I got a good work in CRD so we can test it out. So let's put it up. This sure is never getting old. Okay, here it comes. Ooh, direct hit. The thing's quite accurate. Okay, so a little bit farther from the television. Oh crap, now it's getting difficult. Now it's going to get more difficult. But it is like a lot of fun playing with the light gun again. And unlike a low red original one to get a faulty and error, this version seems to be working just fine. And I'm surprised to be honest. I'm really surprised. Now let's make it a little bit more difficult. Oh yep, I'm getting the hang of it. Uh, another one. Ooh. I know I'm not cheating. Cheat. Oh, oh, that was almost. Okay, let's finish up the stage. Let's go. Yeah. Okay, let's go on. I enjoyed that too much. All right. So, and what I just wanted to do now is doing quick tear down just to see what's inside so what i noticed with this device is that there is a lot of distortion when it comes to the oh my gee what is this to the sound itself okay so whatever so let's can it yeah i can fit the big one of course we're going to do a quick tear down ah whatever i can only get myself a new rubbery feet for this that's kind of cheapo man like why didn't they like use actually good rubbery feet? Now I like these cheap filts. Warranty? My ass with your warranty. Here. Or maybe I can just open it like that. Yeah, alright. Be very careful. Can you see? Uh, there were some warriors in there. To be careful with. Alright. Warranty have been void. Mm -mm. But let's do a quick peek in the inside so first of all i cannot remove the cover fully because it's going to be a cable nightmare 
Yep, absolutely. So we're having here the two springs. I really hate these things. The reason why, because sometimes they get loose and your cover is not closing anymore. Oh, look at this, the way how they made this. It's so cheap. But let's do a quick overview of the internals. So first of all, they went hot glue madness with this and also for the LED over there, like they, that, it looked like, like they slapped an LED in there and that just sold the cables to it. Like, oh my gee, that is really bad. Over here, we're going to get hot glue madness for the ribbon cable. It's all made very, very cheaply. Over here, we're going to get the date when the device is produced, 2015. So quite interesting, this thing is already a couple of years old when making this video. Maybe this is just old stock. Okay, here we're going to get the signal out, power supply input. But I find it all like made very cheaply and I'm not really satisfied what I'm seeing over here. Also, the PCB is bent here. You can see it has some different spaces between here. So it's bent. I did see some crooked switches like, I think it's the on off switch or the reset switch. Do I see correctly? Yeah, it doesn't even matter, like it's a little bit crooked. And overall quality inside is not, mm, it's not going to be like really satisfying and saying this isn't a very high quality product. No, <laughs> that's what I think about it. So another thing I really hate about it are these very tiny springs. And the reason why, because they get always loose and in the end, your one of your dust covers will not close anymore. I wanna say it will happen to everybody, but I have seen it a couple of times. Look how thin these things are like, oh my gee, oh man. Okay, so what do I think of it? So the system itself, I don't like the signal output. And that also includes for the audio. So that, like all the outputs that you're using are like not good quality. So I hear, I hear a lot of interference, maybe in the video you can it, it pick it up. But an overall like, it is really bad. And the build quality, I was not very satisfied with it. So the converter seems to be working just fine. It's a really cool thing to have extra so you can play, let's say the normal Famicom games or the NES games. So that is pretty damn awesome. The light gun did surprise me. It feels fairly cheap, but it seems to be working fine. And the same also applies to the freaking controller. The controller, I wish it was a little bit bigger, but the D-pad plays very well and I was very pleased with it. So overall, the control seems to be working just fine includes for the adapter but the system is not the quality that i hoped for it's more like the cheap let's say fake knockoff doesn't even matter how you want to call it it's just cheap don't like it and all and i wish they made like better signal output i want to thank you for watching consider subscribing hit the little bell become one of my family and i will see you in the next video